Alabama's Lake Martin, the third stop on the Top 100 Pro-Am Tournament Trail. And this one's going to be a real test of the best, because if the weather forecast holds true, the bass are going to be wearing their overcoats. Martin has a good bass population, but the cold front conditions are going to make it tough fishing. I'm Bob Cobb. We'll see what happens when the Bass Masters return. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. The Alabama Top 100 Pro-Am, third stop on the Bassmaster Pro-Am Tournament Trail. It's a four-day event pairing the best 100 BASS pros with amateur partners. However, they compete in separate divisions. The time is early December here on Alabama's Lake Martin, a 40,000-acre impoundment located less than an hour's drive from the state capital city, Montgomery. The fishing is good on this island-dotted lake. While Lake Martin sports a healthy population of largemouth bass, the predominant species is the spotted bass, a close relative of the largemouth, usually smaller but scrappy for its size. Lake Martin is in its normal winter drawdown period, shrinking the lake in total area and exposing what would normally be good fishing cover. But regardless of the lower water level, there's plenty of structure to fish here. Sunken brush piles, points, and drop-offs. This first day, the anglers are catching bass, keying in on the pattern or patterns they found during the three-day practice period. And here's how all-time BASS money winner Larry Nixon put together his successful pattern. Anytime you're fishing a, a new lake in the fall, or this is basically what I would call real early winter, there's usually two patterns going on. The water's not quite cold enough for all the fish to be in deep water, and uh, to me, I prefer to uh, throw a crankbait on Strange Lake because Number one, I don't know the lake that well, so I'm trying to cover a lot of water, and uh, I've just what I've done is put together a point pattern here. Anytime I can find about 15 to 18 foot of water running real close into a, a boulder rock bank or a point, that's the pattern that I'm running in this tournament. There's a lot of fish out in uh, 12 to 45 foot of water, but I can't get them to bite too good, so I'm sticking with the sure thing. The first day weigh-in at Wind Creek State Park and Larry Nixon comes to the scales. Woo! 14 pounds, 11 ounces. Let's have a nice hand for Larry Nixon. And here's a Bassmaster Pro who's on a roll, Randy Blockett. Watch Blockett's weight. 15 pounds, 6 ounces. Let's give a nice hand. Woo! Oh, that's great. Randy, we want to ask you, that was a marvelous creel. And you, of course, are on a, on a sort of a roll lately. And that's the largest, largest creel of the day. Yeah, well, I had one little area in the lake that um, I went in practice and I got several bites, but I had my hook cut off. And I, I really didn't know what I had. Um, one of the guys that was practicing with me, he caught a six pounder up there in the area in practice. But I went in there in practice and I didn't stick any fish. And I went there today and they were pretty good fish. I had two real little ones. Um, and as soon as I caught my limit, I left. So uh, hopefully they'll bite again tomorrow. Day two and the weather forecast for the balance of the tournament isn't good. Rain and an approaching cold front complete with sleet and snow. Unlike most of the anglers who are fishing points, humps, and backs of coves, first day leader Randy Blockett of Missouri is fishing way up in the headwaters of this Tallapoosa River impoundment. And there's a definite reason he's here. Well, going into the tournament, I, tell, or I, I tended to feel that there were going to be a lot of small limits caught on the lower end of the lake, a, a lot of four, five, six pound limits, and I figured the only way to win the tournament was to catch some large now. So that's why I opted to fish the river portion. I came up here in practice, and um, I, I located these fish the first two hours, the first day of practice. I caught a six, or the guy with me caught a six pounder, and we had several other bites, and I didn't come back the whole practice period, so I didn't really know it was here. I came back yesterday, and they were good quality fish. And got two this morning, and I already missed two. So if I can get seven bites, I think I can have 15 pounds because they're real good fish up here. Fine. 
Oh, man. I released a six-pounder in the same spot in practice, but I don't think this is Essentially, Randy is river fishing, and the peculiarities of a river can pay dividends. Yeah. Well, the good thing about this spot here is, even though I'm fishing isolated cover, there's a lot of current in the river, and I think the fish tend to reposition and move a lot and replenish themselves. There may be a bass in one log one day, and not there the next, but then some of the stuff that I haven't got a bite in, I'm getting bites out of now, so I think they just roam around in here a lot. It's just like fishing a river. The second day weigh-in goes much like the first, as Randy Blockett comes to the scales. Here comes our leader, Mr. Randy Blockett of Missouri. He has only six pounds of bass. He's pushing hard. He's hanging in there with 15 pounds and six ounces through yesterday. I read about you in the paper this morning, your comments that you gave us yesterday about your experiences of rolling that hook around and um, just simply finding those fish in a rather remote area. Today, that's way of six bass. Folks, he's got a remarkable creel today, even though he only has six. Total weight, 13 pounds and two ounces. Let's give a nice hand. Although Randy Blockett still leads this BASS Top 100, his advantage shrinks to a mere nine ounces as Missouri's Stacy King weighs in the second largest stringer of the day at 15 pounds, six ounces. And Guido Hibden, leading the Bass Angler of the Year race, is only a pound, 10 ounces out of first. With two days remaining, it'll be a horse race with $45,000 to the winner. The Bassmasters will be right back from the Alabama Top 100. Don't go away. There's more bass catch in action coming up. Day three of the Alabama Top 100 Pro-Am, and the conditions have changed. It rained heavily during the night, muddying several of the small creeks and the main river where Randy Blockett is fishing. Cold water can hinder the catching. So can muddy water. The combination of cold, muddy water is one of the toughest situations a Bassmaster can face. Missouri's Guido Hibden is on the fish this third day. His consistent performance on the Bassmaster Tournament Trail readily supports the fact that you shouldn't ever count out this former Bassmaster's classic champion. Missouri's Stacy King is also catching bass this morning. This former Bassmaster's classic contender is always a threat. When I found these fish in practice, they were uh, in on the banks. The weather was warmer, the sun was out, and it was real nice during the day and they'd moved in on the banks to feed and we were catching them the same method. We were burning this spinnerbait real fast. They think that's a little shad running. I've been seeing, seeing them chasing bait. It's about a, it's shad about an inch long, looks to me like, and this spinnerbait represents one of them running, streaking away from them. And uh, what's happened with these fronts moving in, these fish have backed off the banks and suspended and they're out here uh, half a cast of the boat a lot of them, and they're, uh, oh, I, I don't know how deep they're coming from. Seems to me like I feel like they're probably coming from maybe four to six feet to get the bait, but they may be suspended over as deep as uh, 15 to 18, 20 foot of water. A lot of the fish are coming up and hitting the bait right at the boat, and uh, what I'm doing is just running down these banks, staying a good cast off, kind of angle my cast, and I'm trying to throw to the bank because I've caught... Uh, three or four real good largemouth. I caught one in practice about five, and I had one yesterday that weighed five, five, and I've caught all those largemouth on the bank. So what I'm trying to do is get part of my cast to the bank and then still have plenty of distance for the cast to come out to the boat because these nice Kentuckys are coming up out here in 12, 15 foot of water to hit the bait. So I'm trying to fish two ways at one time, and it seems to be paying off pretty good. I'm getting a lot of Kentucky bites, and. Uh, once in a while, you'll get that good largemouth to go along with him. After a while, I'm gonna, uh, I've got seven fish in the box right now. Four of them are real nice ones, and three of them are small. I'd like to get three more good Kentuckys, and then I'm gonna go strictly hunting a big largemouth, and I'll start fishing the bank and fishing rocky, windblown points uh, with stumps and a little bit more cover and fishing considerably shallower than... With the leader in trouble and challengers like Stacy King and Guido Hibden catching bass, this third day weigh-in could prove interesting, and with a few surprises, like here from Out of the Blue. Look at here. Do it! Get it tight. 21 pounds and seven ounces! <laughs> Woo! Look at it, folks. My gosh. Hey, these are just two of them. And Reno Pelletier's big bass will weigh nine pounds, two ounces, biggest of the day. 
Now, Missouri's Stacy King comes to the scales. Seven bass, all alive. Stacy, this is going to put you in the lead for the tournament. Just hope I stay there. He said he hopes he stays there. Stacy King's weight, 14 2. 14 pounds, 2 ounces. But this competition is going to change right now. Robert Tucker, Texas folks, a beautiful bunch of fish. Tucker, look at him, fifth place yesterday with 23 pounds and 9 ounces. And folks, he is loaded. Seven bass to Tucker's credit. Watch the scale. 19 pounds even. Yeah. Woo. All right, it's going to make it today. Pull him out. This puts him in the lead. Tucker, Robert Tucker of Texas has moved into the lead. Yeah. He is your new leader. Move over this way just a little bit. I got to ask you a question. Now, you uh, have never led in the tournament that I can recall. Do you recall ever leading? Now, Ralph was in second one time before, and uh, I ran out of fish the last day. I didn't catch enough, but I fish the same water I've been fishing. I just caught bigger fish today. It's just some big ones moved up, and it seemed like they moved up, you know, where I've been catching them, and I've been catching 15, 18 fish a day, and most of them spots. Well, today there were some blacks with them. The Bassmasters will be right back from Lake Martin and the BASS Alabama Top 100 Pro-Am. Stay on board. Alabama's Lake Martin, the third stop on the Top 100 Pro-Am Tournament Trail. And this one's going to be a real test of the best, because if the weather forecast holds true, the bass are going to be wearing their overcoats. Martin has a good bass population, but the cold front conditions are going to make it tough fishing. I'm Bob Cobb. We'll see what happens when the Bassmasters return. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. The Alabama Top 100 Pro-Am, third stop on the Bassmaster Pro-Am Tournament Trail. It's a four-day event pairing the best 100 BASS pros with amateur partners. However, they compete in separate divisions. The time is early December here on Alabama's Lake Martin, a 40,000-acre impoundment located less than an hour's drive from the state capital city, Montgomery. The fishing is good on this island-dotted lake. While Lake Martin sports a healthy population of largemouth bass, the predominant species is the spotted bass, a close relative of the largemouth, usually smaller but scrappy for its size. Lake Martin is in its normal winter drawdown period, shrinking the lake in total area and exposing what would normally be good fishing cover. But regardless of the lower water level, there's plenty of structure to fish here. Sunken brush piles, points, and drop-offs. This first day, the anglers are catching bass, keying in on the pattern or patterns they found during the three-day practice period. And here's how all-time BASS money winner Larry Nixon put together his successful pattern. Anytime you're fishing a, a new lake in the fall, or this is basically what I would call real early winter, there's usually two patterns going on. The water's not quite cold enough for all the fish to be in deep water, and uh, to me, I prefer to uh, throw a crankbait on Strange Lake because Number one, I don't know the lake that well, so I'm trying to cover a lot of water, and uh, I've just what I've done is put together a point pattern here. Anytime I can find about 15 to 18 foot of water running real close into a, a boulder rock bank or a point. And how does this morning's leader feel about the day? Stacy, I think, is fishing about the same way I am, and I think it's all going to boil down to whoever gets that big bite today to probably win this tournament. You know, I've got a limit. I feel good about it. I'd just like to get rid of a couple other fish. I know it's going to be real close between Stacy, Guido, and myself, so 
Hopefully I can call them last two little ones I got and improve my weight maybe by a couple pounds and maybe get lucky and get a real big bite. But, you know, I've, I've had a great tournament and I can't complain at all. I've really enjoyed myself. We'll know the outcome of this tournament shortly. For the past two days, angler Wayne Waldrop of nearby Alexander City has led the amateur division. And his performance today clinches the championship and a $15,000 Ranger bass boat. Mr. Wayne Waldrop of Alexander City, Alabama. Let's have it, boys. Six bass. He's a leader. He's a leader, and he has 20 old pounds to in a little bit, uh, 24 pounds, 5 ounces. And the weight today, 6 pounds and 10 ounces. I may make a winner out of him. Let's give a good hand, folks. That's an excellent job. And Let's now the Pro man, Division man. finale. Stacy King way. comes to the scales. Stacy King is in second place with 42 pounds and one ounce. Somebody said he never catch 40 pounds. But he not only caught 40 pounds, he caught 40 pounds on the third day. Five bass in the total weight. Nine pounds, one ounce. Let's give him a good hand. He has taken the lead, if I'm not mistaken. There's only one angler left who can pull it off. Robert Tucker. Robert Tucker has never won a big bass tournament. He's been in there money, high up in the top ten time and time again, but never broke the ice into the big one. He's got to have... 810 to win, and it's about a $50,000 payday plus a jillion dollars in endorsement. All right, hit the scales with it. 810 to win. 11 pounds, three, 11, two. 11 pounds. Let me check it again. 11 pounds in two ounces. Ow, oh, foul, I'm proud of you. Robert Tucker, I've got to ask you this question because I think you won this tournament. Tell me what happened. What was your plan? You, you, beat a, you beat 98 of the best fishermen in the country. And you don't do that just getting out of bed late. Well, Ray, I don't know. A little luck, I guess. And uh, I don't know a long time. One of the dreams I've been dreaming about since I've been a kid, you know. First dream was make the classic. Made that and almost won a tournament three years ago and come up short. but. I had a couple real good friends here in Alabama that helped me out on the lake a little bit that, you know, showed me some decent areas to fish. A man named LaVon Bentley and Philip Upchurch. They told me that I heard this lake, lake tournament was coming here and that, you know, he could help me a little bit. And I come over about a month ago and fished a couple days with him and he told me if I could concentrate on these areas, I could probably catch some good spots. And fortunately, I got some good bites. I caught a lot of fish each day. Today, I only caught eight fish, so I just, I had to struggle. I mean, I fished water that I've been catching four or five fish every time I pull up on. Today, I couldn't get a bite. And I mean, I was nervous. <laughs> Listen, how many years you, I lose track, how many years you been fishing on that trail? When did you start? This is my fourth year, Ray. Um, 87, the first year, and I made the Classic A. Had a real good year, and I've had some good years. I've, last year, I missed the money four or six tournaments by less than a pound. I just thought, man, a snake bit. I just can't get nothing going. You could have gone with a pocket full of money if you win this thing. It looks like you're that winner. Well, I appreciate it, and I thank everybody here for coming, and I've had a great time. Well, let's have a nice hand, folks. And for this Texas Bassmaster, it's a dream come true. Robert Tucker, the champion of the Bassmaster Alabama Top 100 Pro-Am, worth $45,000. His payday for four days of fishing against the best anglers and the worst weather. Right now, it's time for the Pro's Pointer, the how-to section of the Bassmasters. Brought to you by Wrangler, the most comfortable jeans known to man. All fishermen incur scratches on their fiberglass boats from time to time. Here's something that's been helpful to me. Here I have a scratch on my boat, and I picked up some uh, fiberglass resin from a local marine dealer. You can pick this up at a local marine dealer, auto supply store, whatever. And along with that, you need to get the hardener, hardener that uh, reacts to it makes it harden. And a little mixing glass to mix the two components together. And you either do it with a toothpick or your finger, simply your fingertip. And on the scratch, put just a small amount over the scratch. And then wipe any excess away. And put on the tape. And with that, you get a good hard surface, slick. And one thing I might point out also is if you've, if you've waxed your boat or tried to rub it out with rubbing compound, 
by all means, clean the scratch before you go to this application. With this right here, and you get a good uh, smooth surface, the scratch will disappear. After a couple hours, remove the scotch tape and your scratch will disappear and you'll have a nice finish. And a gritty win for Robert Tucker. And we predict it won't be his last. He's got the right stuff. Next week, we'll be in New Hampshire at Lake Winnipesaukee with Bassmaster Danny Correa. This is the lake where Danny earned his BASS Federation honors to qualify for the Bassmasters Classic, a chance that launched his pro angling career. It's a lake you'll like too, loaded with smallmouth bass. For the Bassmasters, I'm Bob Cobb, and we'll see you next week. The Bassmasters has been brought to you by Ranger Boats. We still build them one at a time. Delco Voyager Marine Batteries. Deep Cycling Maintenance Free. Abu Garcia, the world's finest fishing tackle. Humminbird, absolutely brilliant technology. Motor Guide, the choice of serious fishermen. DuPont Power Lines, Stren, Prime Plus, New Magnathen, and Magnum 1440. Polaroid, new 35mm one film. For beautiful pictures, the choice is easy. Johnson Outboards. Wouldn't it be nice if everything else were as dependable as your Johnson Outboard? Bass Pro Shops, world's largest supplier of premium tackle. Wrangler, the most comfortable jeans known to man. And the Bass Angler Sportsman Society, the world's largest bass fishing organization. Idea of what some of the, quote, better fish are gonna look like. If, you, if he does this every day, 50 pounds will put him in it way up yonder one, huh? There they are, there's a large mouth and a spotted bass over here.